Hello dear children, today we are going to learn modals. Uh, when we talk about modals, we talk about words like can, could, shall, should, will, would, etc. Modals are nothing but helping verbs. Alright, now let's see how are these modals used um, in correct usage of grammar and how do we use it when we use English as a language. Can can be used as ability. Could can also be used as ability. We'll see how. Can can also be used as possibility and could can also be used as possibility. They both can be used to make request and to ask permission. Also, can and could are used to talk about things which are allowed to be done. Let's look at the first example. Can shows ability, for example, and it is also used in present tense to show ability. For example, you're showing that you're able to juggle three plates at a time. So you would say, I can juggle three plates at a time. Could is not a past tense, but it could is not a present tense. It is used as the past tense of can. For example, we can say, I could speak Arabic when I was in Arab, when I was in Dubai. So, could here is used as a past tense of can, can, and we are talking about an ability which existed in the past. And for some reason, it doesn't exist anymore. The second way how we can use can and could as possibility can be in a general way. For example, we can use can in a general way to say things, for example, they can catch the train if they leave now. There is a possibility that you can catch a train if you leave on time. So that's how we make a general reference of can to uh, uh, show possibility. However, could is used to make possibilities for specific events. For example, the globe could get warmer by five degrees this year. So please understand here, the globe could get warmer. Here, we are talking about a possibility that um, the globe, there, are, there is a chance, there is very high chance that the globe could get warmer. And so we are using could. We can also use can. However, the more appropriate word here would be could. Can and could are used to make requests. Especially can can be used to make informal requests. For example, can you lock the door? You would say like this to a friend. And uh, this is a very informal way of asking. However, could is more polite and it's also it also is used to uh, speak um, uh, formally. For example, we can say instead of saying can you lock the door, which becomes very informal, we can say could you lock the door instead. When we need to ask permission, when you have to ask permission, then we can generally say, can, can I borrow your pen, for example, or can I speak to you? That's a very casual way of asking permission. However, could is more polite and more formal. So instead of using can, it would always be better if you're talking to your boss or maybe if you're talking to your teacher or, or a person whom you have met for the first time. Usage of could is more recommended because that sounds more polite and more formal could you lend me your pen for example we also use can uh, to speak about things which are allowed all right and we can use it in present as well as future tense we have seen how do we use can in present tense um, you can think and let me know later for example is a sentence where can is been used as a future tense uh, in reference to a sentence which is talking about uh, an event which is going to happen in future. Could is always used as past. For example, we say we could take two leaves a month at work last year. What does the sentence mean? Maybe now the condition is not so, but there was a time when we were allowed to take two leaves. So, so 
you were allowed to have two leaves. So instead of saying I was allowed to take two leaves, we can also use the word could. The next set of uh, models is may and might. Uh, may and might can be used interchangeably and are used interchangeably uh, in lot of cases. However, we can uh, let's see how we can use may and might to talk about possibility. For example, we say I may visit Ria today. That shows that I'm not sure, but I may visit. So there's a 50% chance maybe that I would visit her. I might, I may visit her. Now, if you say might, might is a word which is more uh, widely used by Americans and uh, 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 more used by UK people or the Europeans instead of uh, Americans. So Americans prefer using may more than might. Uh, Americans also use might a lot of time when they have to use, uh, you know, things which they want to talk about wherein they wherein may can also fit in. So in, an American might say, "I'm instead of saying I may visit Tria today, an American also might say I might visit Tria today. So that means that you have 50% chance maybe that you will see Ria. So may and might can also be used as, sorry, may can also be used to make a request. For example, may I go? But you're requesting something and you're also asking a permission. So it, it's used for my, making request and asking or giving permission. Let's see an example. For example, a person is saying, may I use your pen? We are using may here because we are asking for permission. And you also give permission by saying, yes, you may. Well, a Native American speaker or maybe a Native English speaker might not say, yes, you may, and instead just say yes. That is also completely fine. So when we say he might join us later or she might not be able to take the test, it is again showing a possibility. However, here, again, the possibility, if you see, it's a little distant or you can say um, uh, it's, it's a more, you can say the percentage of surety that you're giving when you're saying the sentence is a little higher than may. So instead of saying he may, might becomes, um, you can say it's very less in percentage. There is a lot of chance that she might not come or she, uh, he might not join us. So there we can use might. Might, like I told you, is again used, can be used interchangeably with may. So even if you say he may join us later, that would be a far more or less chance. If he says may, it would be there are more chances that he might not come. But when you say he might join us later, there is always a little chance that he might. So the degree will be a little higher than may. When we are talking about might, we also use it to ask and give permission. For example, might I ask you to join me for a walk? This is an archaic way of using uh, might to ask a permission, right? We can also easily say, may I ask you to join or would you join me for a walk? That's more modern and more American. However, when we say, might I ask you to join me for a walk? This sounds very, very European. In olden times, people from Europe or the English people, the people from British, were Britain, they would always say uh, uh, questions like this. So instead of using may, they might say, might I ask you to join me for a walk? Please remember, again, may or can are the helping verbs which can be used interchangeably in some cases. For example, instead of saying may I go, you can also say can I go. However, may sounds more polite than can because can is informal we can also say may i come in instead of may i come in if we say can i come in that's not incorrect at all it's the degree of politeness that you're showing by using these models the next set of uh, models which are quite confusing and it also has a wide range of uh, understanding to uh, absorb so they will and would the first way how we use will is to show our ability. For example, we say, 
uh, when we use this let's first talk about how do we use will okay for example uh, used to talk about future so will is used to talk about uh, future for example Cindy will reach home tomorrow here we are not showing ability but we are using or uh, will as a future tense all right however we are also Here we can see that we are talking about uh, something that Cindy can do, right? We are also talking about her ability to reach your home tomorrow. And we are using Cindy as, uh, we, are sending, we are using will as a future tense here, okay? And we are using it to express and talk about ability. Uh, would is used to talk about past tense. So, would is the past tense of will. If we say we would walk in the woods as children, this means that there was something that we used to do regularly. Uh, maybe every weekend we used to go for a week. So, instead of for a walk in the woods. So, instead of saying we used to walk in the woods, we can use we would walk in the woods, uh, woods as children. So, you're talking about a daily routine that you used to do. Will and would can also be used to change, to show possibility or to express willingness. For example, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, in this sentence, you are showing your willingness or you're showing that you are going to see, um, somebody is going to see you tomorrow. So that person is expressing his will or wish that he would see you tomorrow. Uh, this also shows a possibility that is tomorrow is the time and there is a possibility that i'll see you tomorrow when we go to italy we'll take a gondola ride so again here this is a sentence which is showing possibility wherein we are talking we are saying that once we reach italy it's possible that we can take a gondola ride wood is used to talk about things that we experienced in the past for example, I had an unpleasant stay at the hotel. They wouldn't turn on the AC after 11 p.m. So here we are talking about, again, we are talking about a possibility. However, we are uh, saying something about the past, right? We are using wood to talk about an experience which had happened in the past. For example, we can use another example by saying this, that I, I couldn't sleep last night. Uh, the bed the, because the baby was crying the baby wouldn't stop crying so here we are talking about a past uh, event wherein uh, which had happened in the past so that's would showing possibility in an in a negative way when we're using wouldn't instead of would right now will and would are also used to ask permission for example can i borrow your pen uh, this is a can word however how will you use um uh, will to ask permission you would say will you come with me or will you give me your car to run so here you are you are asking permission would is, uh, on the other hand, used to make uh, polite uh, uh, permissions or asking permissions in a polite way. Would you lend me your pi uh, pen? I pardon you, the writing here is not correct, so I'm just going to annotate and I'm going to correct this. This is not correct. So here, let's write down an example with would. Right. First, we are going to use it with will. So, will you allow me or will you give me, will you give me your pen? Here, we are seeking permission before we are taking something from you. So, we are going to ask, will you give me your uh, pen or something? Yeah. So, this is how you are going to write this and 
how do we make polite requests with wood how do we make polite requests with wood let's see so i'm going to write down a new example we would say to make polite requests would you mind would you please or let's say would you mm, would you would you leave the room would you leave the room so here you're asking someone to leave the room but at the same time you're trying to be polite so you're using would to seek permission or or would you let me leave you're seeking permission here okay next one is to make promises and offers will is often used to make promises so how do we make promises when we say i'll i'll pick you in the morning so this is some kind of guarantee that you're giving to the person and your uh, the other person is going to expect you to expect to see you in the morning so you're showing your um, you're promising something to the person that is there right so will is used to make promises and offers will you leave me at the station is a is an offer as well as a request that you're making i'll pick you in the morning is an offer here when you say will you leave me at the station it's actually a request where you are asking the person for a requ you're requesting something however instead of will if we use would that becomes a more polite request would you help me or would you please be quiet so here we are using would to make polite request will and would as conditionals and hypothesis uh, in these sentences you will always have a if all right for example if you give me a chance i'll prove my innocence so there's always a condition the condition is if you give me a chance all right and what are you going to do the resultant is i'll prove my innocence and that's used as a conditional it would be very expensive to stay in a five-star hotel this is more theoretical and um, it's it's an assumption that we're making and uh, it must be word of mouth we know from our experience or maybe from others that uh, a five-star hotel is going to be expensive so we can always say it would be very expensive to stay in a five-star hotel or i would help you do your homework but i have no time i could have done your i could have helped you to do your homework instead of could have we can use i would help you do your homework but i can't do it because i have no time so would here is again used as a hypothesis what about shall and should these are again an, another set of uh, helping uh, verbs or modals that are very widely used but shall let's remember shall is uh, mostly used to ask questions and make requests yes to show to show obligation however um, if you see amongst the, the, the english european or the american english you will see that shall is used as a more old-fashioned uh, word right we use shall to make offers and we always use uh, first person I we etc for example we are saying uh, I shall help you carry or uh, if you're asking a question you will say shall I help you carry your bag right so here you are offering something you're offering to help to express decisions about the future we also use shall to make decisions in the future for example you're declaring something about you what you're going to be in the future i shall be a scuba diver one day so shall is also used to uh, say about something which is which has not happened yet another way how we can use shall is to make polite decisions for example shall we talk about it later so you have decided something and you are telling it to your friend very very politely you want to talk about something but not now so you're going to in a polite way you're saying shall we talk about it later we also use shall as an obligation means uh, uh with uh, uh, with when you go to school you have a lot of obligations right or rules are uh, with, with a certain limit of strictness 
so we use shall also to show some kind of strictness all right for example students shall walk in a queue so that that's an obligation students are not allowed to walk randomly but in a queue so here shall tells us that it's like a rule and you have to follow it to make a promise shall is used uh, you shall be given a promotion next year again here is a declaration made okay a declaration somebody is declaring something and it could be a boss to a subordinate he is saying that you shall be given okay so it's for sure okay and there is a surety you can assure yourself that the, a promotion is going to you would be given a promotion let's go to should should is used mainly in two words should is an should is a suggestion word so uh, we use should to make suggestion or to show obligation so to show a suggestion we use should uh, as an advice to give advice or to give a suggestion so when we say you should take some rest so here should is used as a suggestion it's not a compulsion i'm not saying you have to take rest you should take uh, some rest means the degree of strictness comes down you're not say, telling that strictly you are giving a choice to the listener how uh, should can also be used to show obligation okay so sometimes yes you can also use should to show obligation however it would not be as strict as ought to or have to or shall okay it's in a lighter note students should wear their id cards in school campus so here should is used to show obligation that students are not allowed to roam around in the school campus without their ids so politely or with a low degree of uh, strictness it is telling we are using should to uh, convey the message that you are supposed to wear your ID cards when you are in school campus. Please remember, shall and should and have to are very closely related modal verbs and they serve almost the same kind of purpose. All right, they, they meet, the meanings are almost the same with very, very little, very subtle difference. Now, let us look at the set of sentences. The first sentence says, he might to join us. Do you think this is a correct sentence? Are we using might to in a correct way? Well, no, the answer is no. We don't say he might to join us. Instead, we say he might join us. He can swim. Well, again, the model here is used wrongly. Here, we only have to use he can swim, not he can swim. He might to join us. What is wrong in this sentence? Well, again, with might, we don't use to. We only say he might join us. You don't should make mistakes. We don't need the don't here before we use should. Should stands alone. So you can just say you should make, you should not make mistakes. You should, you should not make mistakes. The next sentence is we can't able to do it. Again, you don't say we can't able to do it, but you would say we can't do it. Not able to. We don't need able to at all. We can't do it. So this is how you're going to uh, keep how the usage of modals. Uh, let's do an exercise now. I have a, a few questions here. Let's see if you can answer these correctly. If you have understood modals, you should be able to uh, answer these correctly. The, uh, so the models that we have learned so far are can, could, may, might, shall, will, should, or would. Now you, there are more models like ought to, have to, um, uh, and uh, might not, etc. And uh, we could have, would have, should have. So these are also models that we are going to learn in the next video. Uh, let's look at these words first. These are the simpler ones. Dash, you like to have a cup, cup of cup, cup of tea. What do you think would be the answer? 
we would always this is a polite uh, offer that you're making you are asking politely so you would use would would you like to have a cup of tea the nurse told me that the doctor dash come back soon there is a certain degree of unsurety we don't know when the doctor is coming okay but when we are talking about a possibility we are going to use would again the nurse told me that the doctor would come back soon and the next sentence is we dash fight to the last here you are showing some kind of you're showing uh, assurance and you have you are it shows firmness right so what would you use you we will fight to the last we will fight. so it is showing your determination and uh, you are also showing your willingness that you're going to fight to the last you dash not touch my things again here you are again showing obligation or you're warning someone what would you use for that of course you're going to use shall you shall not touch my things again the next sentence is you dash stick to your words here again most of the time we hear we tell others that when you break a promise we say you what would you use you should keep your promise so in the same way here also we're going to use you should stick to your words dash you please lend me your bicycle so you are asking for permission here and would would be the right choice would you please lend me your bicycle as a reward and you as ask for a reward and you declaring this is a declaration that is being um uh, it's it's like a conditional also you can ask and then get you can ask and get so shall can also be used to declare something so here this is a declaration made you ask for a reward and you shall have it for sure so again there is a high degree of assurance here dash is soul rest in peace what do you rest in peace what do you think could be the right model this is a very common sentence we all use so may his soul would be the right choice you dash not go in for the old car you should not go in for the old car okay this is a suggestion and uh, if you don't do that you might face adversity you might face some problem i dash report against you if you don't mend your ways i will report against you so will it would be the correct fit here because here this is again showing about a future event i am going to do something in the future if you're not doing this now so this is a conditional all right wherein if is there so it's a condition if you don't this i will do that if you don't do this i will do that so that's a conditional i dash run very fast when i was young oh this is talking about the past so what do you think we are going to use i could run very fast when i was young that means you're not young anymore and you're talking about a past event so could would be the right fit may i come in madam of course this is a polite way of asking for permission and you would always ask your teacher like the same we dash have a stormy night again this is a prediction that we are making and uh, there is a 50 50 chance or maybe 60 40 chance that there is going to be a stormy night but not for sure we cannot say a stormy night for sure we can only predict so we are going to use may he told me that i dash go home then he told me that i could go home then so could a permission which was given in the past so he told me he told me that i could go i was allowed to go home so here could is used as a past tense dash you live long my son of course again this is a wish that somebody is making and uh, wishes are always uh, wishes always begin with a may so best wishes always start with a may so may you will live long my son he can speak english fluently that is showing an ability that he is able to speak english fluently i would help him if i dash this is a sentence in past tense okay if i had the capability if i had the resources i would help him so again if is there and it's a conditional sentence so what do you think would you write i would help him if i was capable 
so what shows the capability or possibility is the word called could so i would help him if i could she has not promised but she dash come again this is there is no assurance there is no surety that she is going to come there is only few chance uh, there is only a, a light chance that she might come there's 50 50 chance maybe you can say so you would use might but she might come dash you wait for dash you wait me for a while again you are asking something you are seeking an answer from someone and you want someone to do something for you so you are going to use a polite way of doing that by using the word could could you wait for me for a while he dash you to his birthday party so this guy is making a list he's uh, inviting everyone and now somebody has come to you and told he may invite you to his birthday party i hope this is all clear and easy to understand modal verbs is no rocket science at all it's a very easy topic i hope you have understood please try to do these questions again on your own uh, and uh, um, i'm going to suggest you some websites where you can find some more useful uh, modal exercises all right if you have any questions queries please feel free to write it in the comment box if you think you have understood modals conveniently consider subscribing my channel thank you so much i'll see you in the next video